Good morning, everybody. We're just on here doing the uh, live thing on Monday morning, and I'm just checking my my things here. It's always so interesting to get going. Get the uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think I've got it figured out. Okay, so we're going to do some pretty interesting stuff today. And um, and so what we're going to do... Okay, let me see. Got to love technology. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, hope everybody's good. And... Um, yay! Jane's here. Okay. And uh, anyway, so what we're going to do, I'm kind of distracted looking down because um, I don't have my other comment thing uh, working right now. So, <laughs> so that's okay if I don't comment right away. So look what we have today. Something different. Um, we have my parchment paper sticking. We have salmon berries. Oh my gosh, how exciting is that? That is just a uh, super... Um, nice to see the berries coming out now with the with the uh, uh spring into summer we're spring we've sprung into summer so yes uh what is this second day of summer and uh so the berries are ready so i picked salmon berries and salmon berries are not something um you know i think that most people use hi heather hi jane heather um so, uh, it's just not, salmon berries are very, um, they're wild, they grow wild here for the people that are, that are on, that are not from here. Um, they grow wild along, along our driveway, <laughs> but they grow wild everywhere and, uh, like blackberries do here in the Northwest. And so, um, but blackberries are, are like super sweet and luscious and delicious and, you know, easy to just eat handfuls. Um, but the salmon berries are quite tart. And I, I should show you, as you can see, the, um, the colors of the salmon, kind of salmon colored, like the fish. Um, and, and then they, um, it seems like they, different plants um, want to have different colors. The way, that's what I learned when I picked them anyway, because I haven't really used them much because they're very tart. They're super tart. They're like a rhubarb. They're like not really that delicious unless you have an affinity for tartness, which tells you something about your digestion. And so, um, so with the salmon berries, um, they are quite tart. Um, they're also um, like really astringent. The, um, uh, they used to, you can eat the leaves, of course, any edible berry. You can eat the fresh, tiny little sprouts that are, you know, the, I should have picked one really, but the little, the little point of the leaf, because it's very tender as a spring green. It's fantastic to add in your salads. It has an additional uh, vitamin C and because it's a sprout of the leaves, just as they're coming up from the ground um, and before they've had flowers or berries, um, it's just got really high nutritional value as a wild food. And so, um, yeah, so the, um, so, uh, what they have done in the past is they actually chewed on the leaves because it's astringent and, um, and apparently like I have not done this, but apparently the root of the salmon berry is, um, I'll put them so you can see them. The root of the sal salmon berry is, is a little bit, uh, pain killing, a little anal analgesic and, um, astringent. And so I have not used the root, but apparently that's what they used to do. And, um, and it, they would drink the root and the powdered bark as a medicine and it would help with stomach problems and that kind of thing. But what we're doing with the, um, with the berries is uh, just, you know, super high vitamin C content and we're, we're going to make food with them, which I have not done because they're like rhubarb sort of, you know, they're kind of, um, yeah, they're very watery and they're not very sweet. Um, but it's free food, right? And, and it's nature's offering. And so we need to take advantage of that. And so they do have a very high uh, vitamin C content. And um, so the thing with rhubarb and the thing with these uh, tart things is generally people will add a lot of sugar, you know, so that they taste like something we would want to eat. 
because um, you wouldn't really want to eat a bunch of these straight up, that's for sure. So my plan is this, and we'll see how it works out. I thought, what can I add that's not sugar um, that we can play with these with? And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a fruit leather with bananas with it. So we're going to, um, we're not going to use all these. We're just going to dump a few in. I don't think you guys can see my Vitamix, which is okay anyway. The thing is so ancient, um, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is put roughly um, I'll add three more. Okay, I think that's going to probably make two cups. That's a guess. <laughs> okay, so we'll just move my tea over here. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two fairly ripe bananas. See, they have the little spots on them. This is way too ripe for me. I don't like bananas this ripe, so it's a perfect, um, perfect opportunity to use these up. And so we're going to blend these up. We're going to put them on the um, parchment and put them in the dehydrator and uh, let them dehydrate until tomorrow and then we'll see. It's too bad that you guys can't taste it live, but I will share with you uh, tomorrow <laughs> what, how it turned out and how they taste. So I'm hoping this is enough sweetness, you know, without adding the sugar. Of course you could use them like a, um, hey Darlene, hi. Um, of course you could use them like uh, rhubarb too, right? So I put the berries in the bottom of the blender because they're so watery, right? I'm hoping to not have to use any liquid or any water. And so, um, and then you guys, I'm just going to reach here. You guys know my Vitamix. It just shoots everything everywhere because it's so ancient. Uh, so we're going to cover that up and we're going to blend it. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> it's looking like a smoothie and it might taste like a smoothie. I didn't, I had not thought about that. See, can you guys see, what do I got? Have I got a glass here? I have a glass here. I gotta show you. I have to show you before we switch, switch to plan B. Look at that. Does that not look like a smoothie? <laughs> okay, I have to taste it. I think I'll add the third banana and then we'll see if it'll be pourable for a leather. Otherwise, <laughs> we're gonna have to go up with something else. Okay, hang on. Wow. Okay, plan B, salmon berry smoothies. Wow, that is amazing. Holy man. Okay, you guys. Forget the leather. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh my God. Who'd have thought? I just really never thought of that. Okay. So you're going to see this on Facebook because this is super yummy. I'm going to say like two cups. I think I added two cups of salmon berries to two bananas, medium ripe. And, um, oh my God, that is super yummy. It is a little seedy, you know, because salmon berries have seeds like blackberries have seeds. So for people that are sensitive to seeds, you know, some people can't have a lot of seeds in their uh, diet. Um, but it's no different than a blackberry. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I almost don't want to um, ruin my beautiful smoothie by adding another banana and trying to make a leather. Um, so I'm going to add this much. To the smoothie just because I, I suddenly love it so much that is really really awesome okay so I have some for my smoothie and now I'm gonna have to go pick more salmon berries okay let's add one banana so so we have probably here I'll pour a little bit more in there my intuitive I'm an intuitive cook and for those of you that are joining recently that don't know me um, everything's by intuition. I'm not a professional cook. I really wing it. Um, and I just do what I do, but I do make a lot of healthy meals that are usually 15 minutes and, um, and I'm a certified herbalist. So, um, 
So I just share what I do and how I do it. And if it works for you or you like it, that's great. And if you don't, there's lots of other stuff on YouTube. <laughs> okay, here's the banana. All right. I don't know if we're going to have like a super thick banana smoothie or if we're going to have a leather. So let's, let's give this a try. Oh my God, how fun. Oh, I'm so excited. I made a whole new recipe by accident. That's usually how these things go. Okay, so um, I've just made an extra, extra, I've just made extra smoothie that's one banana sweeter. Two banana, three banana. So, <laughs> now we've got it. We have a, uh, oh my God, they're so good. We, <laughs> we have a, um, I'll write it down, or you guys can too. Anyways, hey, new recipe. We're, we're all dehydrate later. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, I'm so excited. Okay, we have a brand new recipe here, salmon berry banana smoothies. And um, you can use two cups of salmon berries to one banana for a beautiful smoothie, or you can use three bananas to two cups, and it's a little sweeter. I'm guessing. Okay, I'm not going to go hunt down another glass. All right, well, that was like super exciting. I'm looking for a place to put things. Oh, super exciting. That's awesome. <laughs> Serena. Hi, Serena. I don't know why my comments don't come up up there. I thought I fixed it today, but I didn't. My comments are coming down there. That's why I keep looking down. But hi, you guys. Okay, so plan B. <laughs> I'm, it's just so funny. Plan B and um, is what we're going to do is, um, I forgot that I need to use my blender. Okay, hang on just a second. I'm just going to um, grab a new thing because we're gonna make sun-dried tomato hummus. And so I just need to um, rinse this out. Hang on, one second. Too funny. I actually didn't plant this out very well. <laughs> What's new, right? Because um, we're gonna use this blender again. Okay, so for our um, for our um, chickpea, it's gonna be like a sun-dried tomato hummus, but I bought these, these are not chickpeas, but, the, but normally you would use chickpeas. But these are regular yellow peas dried i bought them dried and you can buy your chickpeas dried as well i soaked them yesterday and um rinsed them off and then cooked them uh with your chickpeas you might want to do that twice because they're a little bit harder than the pea peas the yellow peas uh these were purchased um it's a yellow pea i don't know the variety it's purchased at um wayne uh wayne smith's um vancouver island grain and milling in port alberni here and so I bought a big, huge bag. And so I soaked these, cooked them. So these are cooked peas, but you can use chickpeas from a can or you can soak and make your own. And if you make your own, you know, to me, it's always better. I'm actually, I don't know if I drained these exactly right. And I don't want this, this too watery or those will turn into a smoothie too. So we're just going to add, um, oh, I don't know. I'm going to save a few of these for soup. So I'm going to guess that's like a cup and a half. So look about right, you guys. And I did use, um, I do use, I like the uh, sun-dried tomatoes that are in the oil, even though I don't like the oil. So what I do is I put them in the um, strainer and I run hot water over them so that, uh, so that it gets all the oil out. Yeah, because I'm not really crazy about the dried sun-dried tomatoes, like the store-bought dehydrated ones to me they just don't have the flavor um i could i guess i could take the time to rehydrate them see if they turn out like this but i have not done that so anyway i already washed these um with the uh, hot water so i'm gonna and that's like a third of a cup pretty much to to uh cup and a half or something like that and so um yeah, so we're just gonna grind this up. What I am gonna do because I love cayenne. Cayenne is a cayenne pepper is a up 
superb. It's really, um, really good for circulation, increasing circulation, and it starts going, it starts with circulation by coming up and it goes up into the head. So um, the cayenne has been used a lot. If you want to drink it in a hot tea, it can be helpful for migraines. It can be helpful for, um, well, lack of circulation to the head, which is, could be foggy thinking, you know, not quite feeling with it. And also with headaches and migraines, um, oftentimes it's a constriction of the blood vessels to the head. And so the cayenne comes up and it actually uh, facilitates the circulation of the blood, opens up the blood vessels and, and um, often will alleviate the headaches. It's also really good for, um, because it, it acts so much with circulation and, and moves your blood, um, it pushes all the blood to the extremities, so it really helps with overall circulation if you're having um, inflammation or arthritic conditions where you're not getting that circulation there, the cayenne is really helpful, uh, especially pulling it up from the feet. So um, if you have edema or swelling of the feet or ankles or anything, you can actually take a little bit of cayenne and... Um, what I do is I make a salve with it, so I heat it in olive oil and then use that to rub on. Um, but if you if you want, you could just use like hot water and um, put a little bit on there and just kind of you know rub your feet with it, and that could be helpful. I mean, it's best made as a as a salve where it'll actually stay on there. Um, but I encourage you to to uh, check out cayenne and and use it a little bit more and make sure it's fresh. It's not an old jar of cayenne that you've had in your cupboard for like eight years and uh hey judy nice hi to see you hi to see you <laughs> we're having a good time this morning we're making all kinds of new recipes okay so uh yes garlic of course everybody knows how antiviral garlic is i love lots of garlic and so that's like two heaping tablespoons of garlic in the um sun-dried tomato hummus and Himalayan sea salt, which is always fantastic as a um, natural salt. And I'm going to use black pepper. And you know what? I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't planning on using turmeric, but I always have it in front of me. And because uh, it's just so um, anti inflammatory and um, beneficial with the curcumin. And it's so good for you. I don't know. I guess when I use black pepper, it reminds me to use the turmeric, which I do in those things. So this is going to turn it oranger, oranger, <laughs> orange, and um, or bright yellow. But that's okay. I don't mind. Um, okay, so simple as that. Uh, chickpeas, if you want. In this case, I'm using yellow peas, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, turmeric turmeric pepper and um, black pepper and cayenne pepper. And um, usually the recipe will call for a bit of olive oil, um, you know, just to help make that consistency. Or what you can do is you can use, um, uh, my garlic mix is sitting here. I guess it needs to be used. I don't know why it's sitting there. It came to my attention. Anyway, you can use some coconut oil too. Um, or you could use no oil. I am going to use a little, um, just a, like a level teaspoon of coconut oil. Um, and I'm thinking mostly it's to make it come out of the blender easier. <laughs> but it will have a nice flavor too. It'll be good. So, um, and since I have, this is a minced garlic, um, I'm just going to add a little bit of that too because I do love garlic. So this would be like a, it's actually a third of a tablespoon, which would be like a teaspoon of the minced garlic. And so, you know what? Just for fun, just for fun. Because if you're going to make something, I always try and make it into a supplement. <clears throat> and, um, you know, if you're going to make food, make it healthy. And if you can incorporate um, medicinal herbs or, or health supplements that are um helpful and healing even more so than the healthy food you're eating. Um, I always like to do that. So here's some astragalus powder. Astragalus is really good for the immune system. Um, it's full of antioxidants. It's uh, antiviral. It's a really awesome uh, supplement and um, it has a really mild flavor. That's what I was going to say. It has a super mild flavor so it doesn't interfere with whatever it is. 
So you can add it to soups or um, pretty much anything. Um, okay, was that it? I think that's it. Okay, so we're going to make noise again and uh, see how this hummus turns out. So I'll put my little lid on the blender. don't want to float right down to the bottom so I could have used a little bit of water but I really don't want it watery and the peas are very well cooked so I don't mind a couple little um, peas crunching to the uh, crunching to the in the chickpea hummus hummus that's the word I'm looking for what I'm looking for is you know what I forgot to bring a little dish to put it in but uh, luckily I have some from for something else that I have planned and so we're going to use that. We're going to use a little dessert dish so that we can show you guys. Yeah there's just a couple little peas there that didn't get mushed up but okay so I'll smooth it out a little so you guys can see. See? Hummus. So this is the sun-dried tomato hummus uh, with a little bit of garlic and pretty much that's it. And um, obviously all natural homemade. Uh, you can use chickpeas or peas or um, you can probably use other things too now that I think about it. But anyway, super easy, super simple, uh, super good for you and healthy. And um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, I was going to say something. Oh well, it's gone. Whatever. Chickpeas, they're good for you. Everybody knows that. I don't need to tell you more about that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to um, we're, uh, we're going to just show you a couple things that I'm going to do for this week. And we're just sprouting some radish seeds. And so uh, for the radish seeds, you can get them, um, you can buy them at the health food store healthy habits or wherever and you can also get them through uh, Nancy um, at microgreens it's actually her her business name is actually let us be microgreens and so she sells them as well that's where I got mine and uh, so you just put your your seeds in some water and you soak it and um, leave them in the water overnight for the first the first round and then you would put them in the little strainer and strain them off and rinse them and then you you what I do is I just leave them in a little strainer the next day because I have you know enough room um, and nobody cares nobody cares what that looks like in the kitchen and or what you can do is you can um, they they sell I don't know who sells I've had this for years but it's like a little um, mesh lid for your jars and it'll fit on the bigger ones too. And so you can put your radish seeds in here, whatever your seeds are, in here, and then um, strain through the lid as well. Okay, so the sprouts um, magnify your um, the nutrition value, I wanna say a um, hundred times over. It's not really a hundred times over, but, um, but it, it increases, uh, multiplies I don't even know how many times a lot all the vitamins minerals amino acids um, the antioxidants it makes all of the nutrition in the plant more bioavailable because it's it's bringing the plant to life right it's sprouting it it's getting ready to put all of its energy into um, growing into the leaves and the plants so super healthy most people know that sprouts are super super good for you so i encourage you to do that and so we're just going to watch these guys over the next couple days and then i'll share with you how easy it is i'm just going to put them you know this is the first soak so i'll put them in here and then we'll have a look and see how they sprout and the radish seeds oh my god they are just so um super super uh powerful they actually contain a, a little balancing estrogen, like a, it's um, just, it's a balancer. Um, oh God, like an adaptogen. 
the word escapes me. But anyway, it balances your, your hormones because uh, it, it does have a naturally occurring type of estrogen with, that's very natural. So it doesn't interfere with anything. It just balances us to be the way that we need to be. And so, um, so it's also uh, got vitamins, all kinds of vitamins, minerals, A, B. Um, I think it's got C and probably K as well. So you're really getting a lot of benefits out of that little radish. The other thing I have here, and this is from Wayne's Grain and Milling again, and this is the purple barley, and you guys have seen me work with purple barley um, lots before, and I really like the flavor of the purple barley, and we've used it in soups and, and, um, and different things like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I have my barley soaking, you can see that. And, um, and then same thing, I'm going to strain it in the, in the mesh thing here, the strainer, and just let it sprout. So we'll keep an eye on that. And of course that will probably take longer, I'm guessing, because it's bigger. I don't really know. I've never done that before. I've never done the purple barley before. Um, there's a lot of recipes for, um, sprouting, uh, grains. And I think it used to be a really big thing in the, in the sixties or seventies. Oh, wow, I can see you guys better now. <laughs> so anyways, um, and there's a thing with barley tea. Barley tea, uh, um, now what they do is they don't use the rinsing off. You don't use the liquid, the water that you've rinsed off for the next uh, soaking um, because it's going to have, um, it's going to have a little bit of the lectin content, right? So it could create gas and bloating. So you're not going to use the, regular water that's coming off the sprouted uh, grain barley in this case um, but what they do is they use a tea they make a tea and so they use the um they on probably the second soaking you would take that barley water and uh oh yay barb's here so um so you take that barley water and you would actually make it into a tea and that's been really investigated. Well, I mean, it's been used for hundreds of years. Apparently, um, they did that in, hmm, oh gosh, I can't remember. I think it was either India or Japan or something, and they were using the barley tea as a, um, um, to help if you're convalescing or you're, or you're ill and you, you're trying to get over something. Um, it, it is a diuretic, so it helps to flush things out to assist with the healing and, um, Hmm, trying to remember um it's got all kinds of things in it i think it's got um well it's probably got the vitamin c and selenium and all those different things so so it pulls out all of the things that barley has in it as a grain and it pulls out into a tea and um apparently it's very very good for convalescing and healing and it's very inflammatory um oh, i'm trying to think but i think um, it's been used for like arthritic conditions too, cause it's anti-inflammatory, the barley tea. So apparently it's really, really good. And so you can try that too, barley tea. And of course, um, I've been drinking a, uh, coffee supplement or a coffee supplement, coffee substitute. And, um, and it has barley in it too. So I can bring that out to show you guys tomorrow. And, um, anyway, so we're going to sprout. Okay, so uh, so for the for the people that came, I'm just gonna recap our our really fun and unexpected session here. But before that, we're gonna do my beautiful bouquet here. This is Saint John's Wort, and um, Hypericum is the Latin name. Hypericum perforatum, I think is the second word. Anyway, Hypericum, and. Um, I was telling you guys a few weeks back that certain plants will grow in certain areas where it seems that um, it seems that that area needs a specific energy or healing or healing energy. You know, so for instance, we talk we we talked about we spoke about the last well the last I don't know when it was but foxgloves are everywhere. Foxgloves, if you guys have noticed, foxgloves are the tall. Uh, plant with the big leaves and it's got the spike with all the purple beautiful purple they go purple pink to white flowers and they're everywhere right now and foxglove is um, the um, uh, well it's the original source of digitalis which is good for the heart so it's heart medicine 
And, um, and so um, that is done through a pharmaceutical company and it needs to be done by that. Don't be going out and gathering foxglove. Do not touch it, do not make a tea, do not do anything with it. It's, it's um, just look at it because it's beautiful. Anyway, my point is it is a heart medicine. It's a heart um, plant. And right now, because of the whole COVID thing and everybody's got hearts on their windows and everybody's sharing that heart energy and, um, you know, offering that compassionate, beautiful heart energy out to the world. And the foxgloves have come to, uh, to help and to join us in doing that. And so it's just super cool that the plant kingdom, well, the whole planet has come together but especially the, the uh, foxgloves have come to offer their heart medicine in an energetic way, which is super beautiful. That seems to be everywhere, the, the foxgloves. These guys, I have noticed that they pop up wherever they're needed as well. All, most plants do, all plants do, I'm sure. There's just so much, uh, so much more um, to know and understand about the plants. And, and Sue Peters is really an expert in this. And so if you really want to know the true energy on all levels of a plant, I would contact Sue Peters. Or I can let you know her contact information. Anyway, so St. John's wort, uh, Hypericum, it's known, very well known, you guys probably know. Most people know that St. John's wort has been used uh, traditionally for I don't know how many decades in the treatment of depression and anxiety. And, uh, and it can be used as an antidepressant and uh, mood lifter. And um, there was a lot of controversy uh, about it um, uh, making people sensitive in the sun, that you weren't supposed to go in the sun if you took it. Well, you'd have to take gobs of it, like, you know, way too much uh, for anything like that to happen. However, it is a medicine. So you do want to um, investigate it before you just randomly go out and buy it. You can get it at the health food store in capsules um, and um, I would not make a tea into it. No, it's not something that you're going to do on your own. It's something that you're going to go to a health professional and investigate because it may be really helpful uh, if you are not um, already taking any medication at all. Like don't be taking any medication at all uh, if you're going to go to the health food store and ask for Usually it's a capsule. Sometimes it's in a liquid, but it's a capsule. Anyway, it's known for that uh, internally to help with um, moods and, and depression and, and helpful for uplifting. But um, yeah, I'd go to the health food store and talk to them about that if that's what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And as a topical, the reason I'm interested in it mm -hmm. is um, it's very, as a topical poultice or a cream or an oil, it's anti-inflammatory. So this stuff is really great in an ointment for your joints, for joint pain, for inflammation. Uh, it's been used for wounds. It's been, um, uh, yeah, it's just super awesome uh, for any kind of injuries. And so, uh, so if you were to pick it, if you know what it is, and never, never, never pick anything unless you know for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure what it is, but if you are going to pick it and make it into a salve, you could do that. So you would just, my plan is to um, put it in some olive oil and then I'll make it into a salve and so it'll be an anti-inflammatory salve. So, um, so I'll work with that and then I'll share that with you guys later. So um, yeah, so that's the, the uh, herb of the day. And so I'm just gonna recap for the new people that came on here. We did this, we did the funnest thing ever. I think, I mean, I get to drink it, so of course I think it's fun and yummy. We did, um, we did a salmon berry and a banana smoothie accidentally, and it's awesome. Like seriously, I gotta take another look at the nutritional content of the salmon berries because I'm so excited about that. That's just, wow, you know, what could be inexpensive, you know, and um, super healthy for you like that is awesome. So the next thing we did, was we made the uh, tomato, uh, sundry tomato hummus with garlic. And uh, you can use either chickpeas, garbanzo beans, or um, I used yellow peas. And then we talked about sprouting and we talked about the um, hypericum, the St. John's work. So that's it. I am going to drink my salmon berry smoothie 
and uh, I'm gonna, um, yeah, that's awesome. I'll investigate some, some other things to do with the sound berries and the bananas, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, let me know on Facebook anything else that you might want me to share or learn about um, that I might be capable of doing or I can find out more and um, send you in the right direction and for sure uh, check out my YouTube videos and subscribe to my YouTube. Okay, thanks. Uh, it was great hanging out with you guys. Have a really good day. I hope the sun comes out and um, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Okay,